I'll be talking about pain of startup or pain of regret today. But before that, I have a very funny story to share with you. This is not the first time I am here in Nagarkoil. My journey started, uh, you know, 25 years ago when I was on family trip uh, to Kanyakumari. This is how it looked back uh, in 1996. And uh, I was traveling with my family to Kanyakumari. And uh, as I said, this is how it looked like. And when we boarded our train uh, from Bangalore uh, to Kanyakumari, it took a halt in, uh, in Nagar Khoil. And this is what has you know, happened with us. So in the picture, you would see my brother, Nikhil. Uh, and of course, he is uh, not as innocent as it would look like in the picture today. We were mischievous by then. And uh, the train was about to start from Nagar Khoil railway station. And we held the, uh, you know, the door handles and kind of were trying to come out uh, of uh, the train door. And a gentleman sitting at the platform, my God, he literally screamed on us. Of course, it was for our security. It was because he didn't wanted us to uh, you know, look outside of the train because we would fell, fell down. And this happened. Well, this was one of the pain, uh, you know, happy pain, I would say, you know, I had an experience 25 years ago, and today here I am in front of this very delighted audience, educated audience to talk about my startup journey. And before I go into it, let me also give you a little background. So uh, I went to IIT Madras, so T Tamil Nadu is, uh, you know, of course, close to my heart. I have been here before as well. And this was about 2006, 8, 2006 to 8, where I was there in the campus, I got my first job. And this is what, what my first lesson of entrepreneurship is, that bad days is not equal to bad life. Each of us would have sometimes felt that you know, we may have bad, bad days in our life, and uh, uh, mind always you know, play us into this game that bad days is equal to bad life. Trust me, this is not. So this is what has happened to me. I went to an engineering college in IIT. I was studying there. I was kind of you know, uh, completed my, uh, my master's there. I was about to go into a job. And if you recall, 2006 uh, to 2008, 2008, 9 was the time of great recession. The great Indian IT meltdown happened. The world, you know, sinked. I got my first job. This was about 40, 50,000 rupees. And as all of us know, you know, uh, what is in, you know, a dream of an average middle class in India? There are three major dreams, right? You want a good house, you want a good wife, and you want a good car. That's, the, you know, the typical dream in India. And I was living that. I got my first job. But what happened was in 2008, each of us was laid down. This recession happened and our life melted as well. This was just pre-Diwali that this happened. And you know, I got my first pain, and which made me to believe that probably you know, bad days have happened to me and I will have a bad life because of a bad start in my career. But this was not the end, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I will be you know, going through a series of other pains, and this is how I you know, fought back uh, to open my own venture later on in my life. So second important thing that I would like to talk about today is salary is a drug. It's a bold statement, but please read it again. Salary is a drug. Salary is given to everybody because people would like to, you know, kind of drug you to make their dreams come true and forget yours. And this is what I was also living. For about two, three years, I fought back. I went to another job. I went into another corporate job. I stayed with it for two, three years. And what happened was I was forgetting you know, uh, you know, that I want to you know, go to startup and start up on my own. And I'm sure a lot of you could relate to it as well today. So the, what has happened is when, when I was you know, working very nicely, I had planned to go to US. Uh, my company was about to send me. All of a sudden, a phone call rang. That evening, that phone call changed uh, you know, my vision to it. There were a couple of colleagues from my old company. They said, you know, why don't we go in together and start up a company? Now, remember, you know, I was an average middle class boy. I have no idea how to incorporate. I was not aware of how to start up, what funds are needed. I had no money in my bank, nothing. Just like an average salaried person, I used to believe my life would go. But that time, I took a leap of faith. I thought probably if I have found a purpose uh, you know, in my life, you know, I will do it. So this is the theme of my talk today, startup or regret. 
I would probably try that you need to understand, you need to believe in your dreams that sometimes you have to take that leap of faith and start up on your own rather than working for too long for somebody else. And for startup or regret, please remember there is no right day. If you think you're not ready today, trust me, you'll be waiting for the rest of your life because that readiness will never happen. You need to invest in your own future. You need to invest things. A lot of time when I give such talks, you know, I, I've been told that where should we start? We do not have the money. We do not have the courage. We do not have the business idea. Everything happens in place once you start believing in yourself that yes, you could start up. Yes, you could, you know, run the business. So the fourth important lesson that I will be talking to today is do not find an excuse, find a purpose. You have to find a purpose. Once you find a purpose, you would start, you know, living up to your own, own dreams. How many of us actually feel today that, you know, life has become a grind, a big grind. We, we wake up in the morning, we go back to the bed, same routines happen, everything same happens in day in, day out. A lot of us actually have felt that. If you find a purpose, if you start living your dreams, trust me, every morning, no matter how difficult it could get when you will reach your offices, how difficult it will get, you know, when you will reach your company, if you have a purpose, you would be trying to live up to your dreams and you would be trying to, you know, work up to your expectations. So what has happened was by now, you know, I found a purpose. The company that I started off with my friends, they betrayed me. I was once again back on the ground. Two years into the business, first time, first movement into the business, I was betrayed, I was cheated out, I was left out. So my salary went from 50,000 when I went out from IIT to about 25,000 when, you know, I started off off campus jobs to 10,000 when I did this third startup. And here I am again betrayed by, you know, my partners. Uh, in the last company. This was the time I decided probably enough is enough. Now I have to take control of my own life. And this is where I started, you know, rebuilding. Now there are a lot of challenges, right? I can understand a lot of us are engineering folks. A lot of us have just passed off college. We have no clue how to make a, a you know, big business out of it. You need to, you know, kind of start learning of it. So this is my, you know, fifth important lesson. We start, start early, be ruthless. Start early would mean you have age factor in your front of you. All of you are very young, most of you are very young, I see in the crowd today. You have to start early. Why early? Even if you commit mistakes, it's okay to commit mistakes. You will have a lot of time to rebound back. You will not be, you know, having the family responsibilities, the credit card bills, the EMIs of car, the EMIs of your houses to pay. You can start up early, you, even if you fail, you will be okay, you know, to come back and fight back. And once you've started, you have to be ruthless. Why I would say you have to be ruthless? You have to be ruthless because in business, the dynamics is changing so fast today that if you're not ruthless, you will be killed. You will be, you know, bust by your competitors. These competitors could be in your city, could be in your state, could be in the rest of the India. So that was the, another important lesson that I've learned in my, you know, small uh, entrepreneurship journey to start early and be very ruthless, you know, in your business. Now, what has also happened is, this is very important, jack of all. We have all heard, you know, a very uh, you know, good English saying, jack of all, master of none, right? Trust me, when you're starting your businesses and have no freaking clue how to start a business, jack of all is what you should need to rely on. For example, in my journey, I never knew how to build a website. I never know how to, you know, get my first, uh, you know, 50,000 to pay my employees. We started with two employees. Today, we are about, about 100 employees. We are offices in India and United States as well. I visited 15 countries and still counting. You have to start, you have to, you know, kind of go into it. And as I said, you have to become jack of all. Now, please, uh, you know, do not misinterpret me. You need not to learn every trick in the world. You do something known as, you know, team building for that. How many of us will be engineers from background and say we do not know accounting, we do not know law, we do not know legal, we do not know, you know, what, how to run things. It's okay. You will find a mentor. You will find, you know, a lot of information on the internet. You will find incubation centers. But remember, you have to become jack of all if you want to get into the business. The next important lesson that I've learned and which is the seventh important lesson is if you want to grow, you need to let go. Please understand this. Let go to grow. Why it is important? Because a lot of times senior managers, leaders, when you're, you know, having the control, you want everything in your hands. You want to, you know, control everything as if, you know, nobody can complete it. And a lot of people are smiling today on this because they have faced that, right? When you're working with team, you cannot control. 
So what I found is if I keep too much of control without giving it back to my team, I'm actually not you know, doing what I should be doing. In fact, a lot of experts and business leaders tell today if the first 35 minutes, 60 minutes of your day is not getting into the most toughest thing that your company, your job is facing, you will be, you know, high chances of facing the firefighting roles that you would do uh, day to day. So you have to, you know, kind of get into this and let go to grow. You have to build a team. You need to give them wings to fly. So whatever roles you are, please remember that you have to, you know, let your team members fly into it. The eighth important lesson is stay neutral. Now you may be laughing at it. You know, a lot of people when they get success, they become too elated. They enjoy. We, we open up beers. They go to beaches. They you know enjoy a lot because you've got a final success. I have a different theory in my life. This theory is say stay neutral because we all know that when you're depressed, when you're feeling negative, when you get negative news in the day, you feel a lot of depressed, right? You feel like not doing the work the next day. The same theory also goes where it says if you're too happy, your senses get biased. You're not able to see the difficult things that are coming the next day. So what I've discovered in my life is staying neutral, you know, would help you a lot, you know, than, you know, you know, either being too depressed or too happy when success happened. And this is a typical day in the life of a lot of us. What has happened is on day one, you're getting a good client order, your client is happy, you know, you're getting good news, you're getting awards. I got a call for TEDx Kanyakumari the same day, my people resigned, uh, you know, I'm also, you know, being told that somebody met an accident and so on and so forth. So my rule is, if the net of the day is positive, if the net of the week is positive, I have all the rights to be stay positive. And this is how you know you have to grow, you have to stay neutral, you have to stay grounded, whatever you're doing. The ninth important lesson is no. The beauty about this word is it is the most small word and a complete sentence in itself. Sometimes you know we become so humble to everybody around, we want to say yes to everything that is happening in front of us. For organizations, for senior managers, for leaders, this could be very catastrophic. To become a popular leader, to become a popular person, we kind of keep good things at par and we keep saying yes to almost every request that we get. Please stop doing it. I learned it the hardest way. This probably is one of the lessons that I've learned very late in my life, but trust me, this is worth the lesson all of you should be, you know, taking to start saying no if it is not in favor of long-term good of your organization, long-term good of your team. Connecting the dots. So as we end up, you know, my, my talk here, I would say that you have to sometimes laugh back. For example, if I summarize my life, remember the recession that happened in 2008. I went to the job. I was laid off my job. I got to my first sales job. I was betrayed by my you know, previous partners. Probably this was all dots that were creating in my life. As Steve Jobs says, you have to look backwards in your life to connect these dots and probably some big purpose, some big things are gonna happen in your life. So stay tuned, hang on you would be getting you know your good you know very soon in your life and you should find that courage you should hang on for some more time and this is what you know the connecting the dots would mean you have to stay there and look like into it lastly you know i would say my last message is being successful as i said you know my entire vision today is probably to make you believe that it's never too late to invest in yourself it's never too late and trust me guys once you reach once you've decided to start your own things, once you, you know, take the pain of startup and forget the pain of uh, you know, regret, there will be doubters, there will be haters, there will be endless problems that you will be facing in your you know, journey ahead. But trust me, you will reach there with your hard work. So you need to start believing yourself that you can do it and I'm damn sure you will be able to do it. Finally, I would say that once you've reached the acme in your life, once you reach the peak in your life, while your abilities could have make you stay there, but it will be your attitude that will, you know, make you hang on at the number one and number two position in your life. So with that in mind, and I will like to thank you, uh, you know, for having me here, and I hope I would be able to inspire somebody. Thank you.